Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for this opportunity to present our paper. I thank, um, likewise, my co-authors for making this um, research possible. Um, so the rapid advancement in technology has facilitated far-reaching use of data. This has consequently led to an increasing demand for data science and analytics for DSA professionals. However, recent studies show that such demand is often not met in many countries and many economies. This shortage is claimed to be rooted in, a, in the mismatch between the skills the industry demands and the skills academic institutions supply. This is particularly true in the, in the Philippines, where studies also reveal the challenges faced by, by Philippine education and training in meeting the level of competencies required to do high skilled jobs. An indicator of this weak point is the persistent high youth unemployment and underemployment rates, wherein graduates land in jobs where their education did not intentionally prepare them for. This paper aims to assess whether there is an alignment between the demand for and supply of data science and analytics workforce. To answer this main question, sub-questions were investigated. Do current workers employ DSA competencies in their current work? What DSA job roles do companies look for? What are the DSA-related undergraduate programs? Which DSA competencies do these DSA related undergraduate programs equip their graduates with? Which DSA job roles do these DSA related undergraduate programs enable their graduates to perform? In the absence of an agreed definition, this study took on the operational definition of data science and analytics, or simply analytics by the Analytics Association of the Philippines, or AAP. Analytics is a process of progressing data along the value chain as it transforms data to information, to insight, to imperatives, with the purpose of delivering the right decision support to the right people and digital processes at the right time for the new society. In this value chain, the collected data which is stored in repositories are modeled for insights that will put forward recommendations for decision makers in various business functions to act on. To complete this analytics process, four types of DSA professionals are needed. These are data steward, data engineer, data scientist, and functional analyst. The data, the data steward develops, enforces, and maintains an organization's data governance process to ensure that data assets provide the organization with high quality data. With quality data in the organization, the data engineer designs, constructs, tests, and maintains data structures, in, including applications that extract, transform, and load data from transactional systems to centralized repositories. Once quality, uh, quality data are properly stored and secured, it's, a it's now the work of data scientists who leverage statistical techniques and creates analytical models to derive new insights from the quantitative and qualitative data. The purpose of analytics is ensured by the functional analyst who utilizes data and leverages on derived insights to help organizations make better decisions in a specific functional domain. Making use of the 10 DSA competencies, the Analytics Association of the Philippines developed this professional maturity model, which defines these four DSA job roles. These 10 DSA competencies have been developed by an advisory group composed of representatives from the industry, academia, and governments of 14 various APEC member countries. These 10 competencies are domain knowledge and application, which applies domain-related knowledge and insights to effectively concept, contextualize data achieved by practice, practical practice and experience and exposure to emerging innovations. Data governance 
is the competencies to develop and implement data management strategies, incorporating data privacy, data security, policies, regulations, and ethical considerations. Operational analytics use general and specialized business analytics techniques for the investigation of all relevant data to derive insights for decision making. Data visualization creates and communicates compelling and actionable insights from data using visualization and presentation tools and technologies. Research methods utilize scientific and engineering methods to discover and create new knowledge and insights. Data engineering principles use software and system engineering principles and modern computer technologies to develop data analytics applications. Statistical techniques apply statistical concepts and methodologies to data analysis. Methods and algorithms implement and evaluate machine learning methods and applications, algorithms on the data to derive insights from decision making. Computing, apply information technology and computational thinking and utilize programming languages, software, and hardware solutions for data analysis. And lastly, the 21st century skills, um, which is really a, uh, and a basket of many other soft skills, like uh, problem solving skills, um, ethical mindset, empathy, social, social and ethical awareness, uh, entrepreneurship and collaboration. Each DSA job role is characterized by its competencies with prescribed proficiency, proficiency level ranging from basic to intermediate to expert. For example, the AP model requires the data steward to be an expert in domain knowledge, data governance, operational anal analytics, and 21st century skills. The data steward must, must have an intermediate proficiency level for data visualization and only a basic proficiency level for research methods and computing. A data steward doesn't need to possess the data engineering statistical techniques and methods and algorithms competencies according to the AAP professional maturity model. To serve as, re as the reference point in aligning the percentage distributions of the DSA job roles which employers demand and the percentage distributions of the DSA job roles which graduates can take on, the study made use of the AAP's professional maturity model as its conceptual framework, and therefore answer the question, is there an alignment of demand and supply for the ASA workforce in the Philippines? Looking at the DSA demand, the demand side, the data on the demand for DSA workforce is very scarce, given that the data is just beginning, the field is just beginning. The study used mostly the data sourced from government agencies' databases and published reports on employment statistics. We also spread the online job postings of employers. We wanted to know how many of the total labor force are already employing DSA competencies in whatever work they may do. From the list of occupations in the PSA's Philippines Standard Industry Code, or PSIC, we identified activities that require some degree of DSA competency. We found 22 of the total 1,271 listed occupations that require some degree of DSA competency to be completed. This 22, we call them DSA-related activities, is only 2% of the total number of occupations that our workforce do. The majority of these DSA-related activities belong to the information and communication subsector followed by the ma uh, manufacturing subsector and the professional scientific and technical activity subsector. The study estimated that in 2016, there were about 174,000 workers who performed this DSA-related activities. This figure was only 0.4% uh, of the total labor force in the, in the country in the, said, in the said year. Almost half of these workers or 42% were in the IT BPM industry. We analyzed each of the four DSA job roles by uh, presenting the level of importance employers have on each of the DSA competencies. 
And the proficiency level, the AAP model required for each of the DSA competencies. So in this slide, I'll, I'll, I'll spend a bit of time for you to understand uh, this, this, the, the graph. So you, you see um, on the x-axis, the 10 DSA competencies. And on the y-axis, you see on the left, the ranking of employers, the, the ranking employers gave to, the, to each of the DSA competencies. Um, reflecting the importance they have of the competencies for the specific job role. On the, on the, on the right side, um, right um, y-axis presents the level of proficiency the AAP model uh, requires for each of the DSA competencies in order for the, the, the specific job roles, role to do the, the work interested to the online scraping of job postings from May 1 to July 21, 2019 revealed the extent employers expect the competency to be needed to complete the work of the specific job role. A rank of 10 indicates highest importance and a rank of 1 indicates the least, the least important, uh, importance. As mentioned already, the AAP model prescribes a proficiency level for each of the DSA competency. Um, a level three means expert level, two indicates an intermediate level, and one indicates a basic proficiency level. Zero for both rank and proficiency level indicates that the competency is not important and, or not required by the employers or the model respectively. As an illustration, um, let's take the the, the work of data steward. The data governance competency is ranked 10. It's a rank 10 and has a proficiency level of three. This means data governance is considered by employers to be the most important competency for the work of the data steward. At the same time, looking at the model, the AP model, um, a, a expert proficiency level is required for this job role and this um, data governance competency. Now, let's look at what we saw from the data. For the work of the, the data steward, the AAP framework does not require data engineering, statistical techniques, and methods and algorithms. However, employers consider these three as needed, together with all the other competencies. The inclusion of data engineering would be attributed to the fact that the task of drafting and implementing data governance policies requires understanding of data systems. For the work of data engineer, the AP framework and employers agreed all the 10 DSA competencies are needed. Among these, employers rank data engineering, computing, and 21st century skills as the most important ones. AAP framework requires an advanced level of proficiency for data engineering and 21st century skills. However, only an intermediate level for computing. We observe a close match between the degree of importance given by the employers and the proficiency level required by AAP framework on the competencies for the data engineering role. Like the data engineering role, AAP framework and employers agreed that all the 10 DSA competencies are needed for the work of a data scientist. The three most important competencies for the data scientist role, according to it, the employers were data engineering, statistical techniques, and 21st century skills. The AP framework requires advanced expertise in statistical techniques, research methods, and 21st century skills, and only basic proficiency in data engineering. The treatment of data engineering as key competency among employers reflected the current work of data scientists, which includes data preparation, model building, and implementation of algorithms. Two other competencies that require an advanced level of proficiency are operational analytics and methods and algorithms, as per AAP framework. Employers, however, did not perceive this competency to be crucial for the work of a data scientist. Like the data steward role, AAP excludes some competencies for the functional analyst role, 
namely data engineering, statistical techniques, and methods and algorithms. The framework further prescribes that the functional analyst be an expert in domain knowledge, operational analytics, and data visualization and 21st century skills, but only intermediate proficiency in data governance. For employers, all the competencies are needed, especially 21st century skills, having a rank 10, data engineering, and data governance following, following it. The necessity of data engineering for the work of functional analysts, according to employers, may indicate that functional analysts were expected to perform a few tasks of the data engineer and data scientist. In summary, the AAP framework employers agreed that all DSA professionals must be very competent in the 21st century skills. However, they did not agree on data engineering as employers found it needed by all four DSA roles, while the AAP framework requires it only for data engineers and data scientists. This observed the discrepancy between the AAP framework framework and employers' expectations on the four job roles may be attributed to the fact that DSA as a profession is yet to be clearly defined. In practice, these job roles are not particularized within the DSA process. This was evident in the responses of hiring managers who said that they often end up hiring wrong candidates based on incorrect expectations. For example, there were job postings for the data science role with the task of a data engineer. These discrepancies can only serve as inputs to the AAP's professional maturity model, which is continuously being updated to adequately capture the nature of DSA work in the country. The online scraping of job postings also revealed the distribution of DSA job roles sought by employers. We found out that 66% of the DSA job posts were looking for functional analysts, 20% for data engineer. 8% uh, for data scientists, and 6% for the data steward role. This distribution supports the fact that DSA is still at the very nascent stage in the Philippines. Its journey, as reflected in the operational definition of analytics, begins with convincing leadership that data is the new oil of the organization. This challenging task of getting the buy-in of top executives certainly falls on those who operate the business as they can articulate how data can de deliver the operational targets. Consequently, the bulk, 66% of the demand for data professionals in the early 2019 was for the, the functional analyst role. Once the top management ha has decided to embrace DSA, the next important DSA job role is the data engineer who ensures that data at the right form are easily available for analytics. Rightly, the second, having 20%, most sought role was the data engineer. This demand for the data engineer, however, may be conf conflated with a software engineer role leading to a lower demand, in lower demand for the data engineer. Only with clean data in data warehouses can algorithms be applied on data for insights. The low data uh, the low demand for data scientists, just 8%, showed that companies still do not have the data ready for the DSA process. The Facebook and Cambridge Analytica scandal in 2018 revealed the dark side of analytics. It showed how data of millions of Facebook users were used without their consent for political advertisement in the 2016 election in the United States and Brexit campaign in the US, in the UK. When data are misused, ethical, ethical issues on human rights arise and put society at risk. Since then, governments have tightened their implementation of data privacy laws. In the Philippines, the Data Privacy Act was passed in 2012 with the National Privacy Commission as the mandated implementing agency. Hence, the demand for data steward has been slightly evident in 2019. To determine this, the supply distribution of uh, DSA job roles, we identified 10 DSA-related undergraduate programs and asked academic experts to evaluate, to evaluate the respective programs sample curricula found in CHED's CMO. In the CMOs of CHED are stipulated the policies, standards, and guidelines for the spe specified undergraduate program 
which higher education institutions must comply with designing and, and delivering the program. The authors sent out invitations to all CHED registered um, higher education institutions for FGD sessions. However, only 18 participated. And given such low number of participants relative to the population of Philippine education, the authors resorted to purposive sampling. In any case, the purposive sampling, especially expert sampling, was considered an appropriate method for an exploratory study such as this. Academic experts from the University of the Philippines Diliman and the University of Asia and the Pacific, who were either program directors or faculty members of these 10 DSA-related undergraduate programs, were convened in focus group discussions and evaluated, to evaluate the sample curriculum in the CMO of their respective programs of expertise. This two um, uh, HEIs represent the two types of academic institutions in the Philippines, namely public, public um, institutions represented by U UP and private uh, institutions rep represented by UAN. In December 2018, when we started the research, there were no undergraduate programs whose primary aim was to produce DSA professionals. Thus, in the absence of these DSA undergraduate programs, we identified DSA-related undergraduate programs, which were simply the undergraduate degrees of professionals who were at that time already doing analytics work. We found these DSA professionals in the monthly meetups of the Analytics Association of the Philippines and the R Users Group. Both groups were run by pioneering DSA industry leaders and frequent resource and were frequent resource persons in DSA related fora. So we surveyed them for their undergraduate degrees. The top undergraduate degree programs of the surveyed DSA practitioners were considered in the study as the 10 DSA related undergraduate degree programs. These programs are computer science, business administration, statistics, mathematics, information technology, library and information science, economics, physics, industrial engineering, and civil engineering. This, the most popular DSA-related programs were computer science, business administration, and statistics. The, under, the undergraduate programs mostly offered by higher education institutions in 2016 were business administration, information technology, and computer science. The academic experts rated the sample curriculum's ability to equip the students with the basic, basic proficiency of the 10 DSA competencies by rating them of either zero, or meaning does not equip graduates with the analytics competency, one means minimally equipping the, the, the students, two moderately equipping students with the analytics competency, three mostly equipping students with analytics competency, or four means fully equipping the students with the basic proficiency of the um, analytics proficiency. We found out that the program that uh, equipped students with most number of DSA competencies was the computer science program, with competencies being um, conveyed or students are educated with this set of competencies. Meanwhile, mathematics program, the mathematics program equipped their respective students with six physics and industrial engineering with four competencies, IT with three competencies, statistics with only one. The business administration, library information science, economics, and civil engineering programs did not equip the students with the basic proficiency of any of the competencies, according to the academic experts. Among the 10 competencies, the programs, most programs were able to equip students with the statistical techniques followed by data engineering, then data uh, domain knowledge, data visualization, and research methods. Meanwhile, all the undergraduate programs would have difficulty transmitting the 21st century skills. During the FGDs, hiring managers highlighted their concern regarding job candidates not possessing the 21st century skills. 
do these programs, prepare the students to perform the entry level work of the four DSA job roles. In other words, are are the graduates are there are their graduates DSA ready? The academic experts rated the sample curriculum's ability to prepare the graduates for the work of being a steward, being an engineer, being a scientist, and functional analyst by giving a rating of either zero, meaning does not enable graduates to perform the task of the particular DSA job role. One, minimally enables graduates to perform the task of the role. Two, moderately enables. Three, mostly enables. And four, fully enables graduates to perform the task of the particular DSA job roles. We found out that the industrial engineering program prepares students for three D DSA job roles, namely data steward, data engineer, and functional analyst. As seen prior, research methods, me research methods, algorithms, and computing comp competencies need to be strengthened to be able to be able to, to enable these graduates to perform also the data scientist role. The next best DSA related program was this was a computer science program. Its graduates are deemed ready to work for the data engineering and data scientist job roles. Still, it needed upskilling on the domain knowledge and operational analytics competencies to be ready to work as data stewards or functional analysts. Immediate data scientist employment may be offered to new mathematicians and physicists. They are not deemed to perform readily as data stewards or functional analysts because they needed to learn more topics in data management and widen the application of their techniques outside of their respective fields, such as uh, finance, actuarial science, and physics. The IT program enabled its graduates to be data engineers. IT graduates have been educated to handle technology architectures, infrastructures, and security which require the foundational skills of data, data architectures, infrastructures, and security. New economists were assessed to be functional analysts with their deep training in conducting research that is collect and analyze data to draw logical conclusions regarding the economy. To be prepared to work as data scientists, they must need a bit more skilling, especially in computing. Even though only 16% of the academic institutions in the country offered the statistics program, there were relatively a good number of data scientists practic practitioners who have this degree. While the sample curriculum in statistics should provide students with fundamental knowledge and skills related to data science, the evaluators were not able to ascertain the sample curriculum's ability to equip the students with the basic proficiency of all the competencies except for data visualization due to lack of details in the course's descriptions. Its graduates need to, to gain the lacking competencies after migration to adequately work as data scientists. Similarly, DSA practitioners with undergraduate degrees in library and information science, business administration, and civil engineering must require the basic proficiency of all DSA competencies through other means. In 2019, this 10 DSA related undergraduate programs produced 176,597 new professionals. Among them, 62,583 DSA ready graduates um, were, were identified. That is, DSA ready graduates are those ready to perform any DSA roles upon graduation. Since some programs, as we saw, enabled their graduates to take on multiple DSA job roles, this DSA ready graduates can fill in 81,078 DSA job roles. Of these available DSA job roles that DSA ready graduates can fill in, 2,002 or 5% were data steward roles, 73% were data engineering roles. 16% were for data scientist roles, role, and 7% um, for the functional analyst role. We acknowledge here some limitations arising from the methodology employed to determine the supply distribution. Using, using number one, using the uh, undergraduate programs of survey DSA practitioners from AAP and R users would may cause some bias. 
the possible sampling bias caused by limiting the survey DSA practitioners to members of AAP and those going to its activities um, was considered minimal, though, given the fact that analytics profession was not yet defined. At the time of the survey, people involved in AAP were those who, despite the absence of a formal definition, had a good understanding of the DSA work. Most of them were organizers or attendees of other non-AAP meetups anyway. However, we acknowledge that other undergraduate programs can likewise equip students with any of the DSA competencies. We identify a couple of biases arising from having ac academic experts evaluate only the sample curricula found in the respective CMO. <coughs> These DSA-related undergraduate programs did not intend to produce DSA professionals. This has to be uh, underlined. So specifically, their curricula were designed to equip their students with the competencies needed to perform the tasks of their respective professions. However, this bias may be mitigated by the fact that these competencies are shared by many professions that is not exclusive to any program or field. Second, the academic experts who evaluated the sample curricula we're not necessarily DSA professionals. Thus, the evaluation of the curricula on DSA requirements may be biased by their own respective professions. To mitigate this possible bias, experts were guided by the AAP's framework and definitions as they evaluated the sample curricula. Third, the sample curriculum only contained the minimum requirements of the degree program and served as a guide for higher education institutions in developing their actual curriculum. Fourth, the academic expert may not have been fully acquainted with the sample curriculum being evaluated because the program of their institutions may have evolved away from the CHED sample curriculum. This is especially the case for the academic experts from UP as UP follows its own charter when designing and delivering its programs. Lastly, the paper evaluation of the sample curriculum did not consider other factors that we know affect the delivery of instruction, such as teacher qualifications, teaching materials, facilities, evaluation tools, and the university's culture. Based on this scope and limitation, it is best to treat the findings and values arrived at this study as estimates and aim to steer further studies of the same or related topic. However, this finding suffice for exploratory study as this research instance intends to be. Okay, now we saw two distributions of the DSA uh, job roles, putting them, putting this together, comparing the percentage distributions of this, the demand and supply of VSA professionals, the study found a misalignment between the employer's demand for and the educator, educator's supply of the VSA job roles. The majority of employers were looking for functional analysts, 66%, while the academic institutions were mostly producing data engineers, having 72%. 66% of the DSA jobs sought by employees is functional analysts. Again, and on the other hand, 70% of the DSA job roles graduates are ready to take on um, is for uh, the data engineer. The findings indicated a scarcity of DSA competencies in the current workforce and a misalignment between the demand and supply of DSA professionals in the country. While employers were looking for graduates enabled to perform the work of a functional analyst, HEIs were producing graduates fit for the, DA, the data engineers. Consistently, DSA-related degree programs equip their graduates with the basic proficiency of the competencies required to perform the task of the data engineer and data scientist. As mentioned, such misalignment can be attributed to the fact that DSA is still at its infancy in the Philippines. Hence, job roles were not particularized. Employers also run the risk of failing to hire the right worker for the right set of tasks. This was evident in the discrepancies between employers' expectations and the AAP's definition of the DSA job roles. With this misalignment comes the impetus for the government to work on appropriate mechanisms. If not, youth unemployment may exacerbate. Based on the foregoing, based on the, foregoing the study advances two main recommendations, namely the use of common definition or framework, such as the AAP's professional maturity model, to define the DSA profession. And next is to strengthen, promote industry, academic, government linkages that can help analytics activities in the country to mature and expand into an, in into an industry and contribute more to the economy. The use of a common definition that can be 
um, can be the basis for hiring, developing, and training BSA talents by the employers. The common definition may be used by the academics in designing and developing BSA programs. Government agencies can use this, the same uh, or the common definition in crafting and implementing policies related to DSA supply and demand, um, specific to uh, agencies such as CHAD, DTI, DIC, DOSD, DOLE, um, and especially also PSA for ga uh, gathering data on, on, on analytics. Um, yeah. And then I only, um, we also uh, put forward uh, future researches. It is suggested that future research be done to investigate the impact of the mismatch in business. Um, as it, uh, it, 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 a it can be treated as an opportunity loss for the business, especially since hiring managers revealed the average time to fulfill or to fill in a DSA position was 46 days. This delay in filling in a position certainly means opportunity loss to the company. Another future investigation can be on the impact of this mismatch on a company's unemployment, especially youth unemployment. It is likewise recommended that an investigation be made on whether this misalignment points to an over or undersupply of DSA professionals. Since the DSA related programs were not explicitly designed to produce DSA professionals, the graduates who completed this non DSA undergraduate programs can take on many other non-BSA jobs. Moreover, it is also impossible to say how many among these ready to take those DSA job roles are interested in doing so. Thus, only a small portion of them will go to DSA. Should more companies decide to be data-driven and become analytically competitive organizations and ITO BPO industry expands to absorb more analytics work, the demand for DSA jobs will likewise expand. It would be impossible, however, to be explicit about over or under supply of DSA professionals unless there is a count or estimate of the number of DSA jobs available, which is beyond the scope of the study. Concretely, um, we can work together to build the country's analytics ecosystem. An example is what the Analytics Association of the Philippines is trying to do. It provides a set of standards and governance to enable this ecosystem which is comprised of the government, academic, service providers, and practitioners. Lifting from AAP's presentation, AAP hopes to enable the various components of the ecosystem to, for the government to formulate an industry roadmap for analytics, to craft policies and regulations that will promote data-driven country governance, to implement data-driven programs and projects for the country. For the academic, to develop curricula for analytics and other emerging analytics related disciplines, to implement related degree programs, to produce job ready graduates in these fields. For service providers of analytics and other emerging analytics related disciplines, to provide placement opportunities for graduates and practitioners, to provide world class products, services, to document and contribute best practices and use cases. For the practitioners to hone their skills and competencies to match world class standards to grow their careers in these fields, to be leading source of talent to address global demand. The products of the ecosystem will be collected, assessed, and reviewed by AAP to improve the competency framework and to, to develop, uh, to document and showcase success stories in the Philippines. So the entire ecosystem hopes to enable organizations to be data driven and globally competitive, as well as to drive smart cities for the good of site. This is from the Analytics Association. And with this, I end my presentation. Thank you.